My name is Larry Bobcat Jeffries, and I was a Soul Train dancer from 1977 to 1983. I was born in Burlington, North Carolina, raised in Hickory, North Carolina, and at the age of 14, shipped off to live with my mother in Washington, D.C. I had two aunts that were older than me, and they danced, and we would go to the community center in Hickory and play the jukebox and dance and stuff. So that started me off. And then I would like watching Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers and any of the shows that had dance in it, whether it be jazz, ballet, modern, African. I just like dance. My dream job was to be a professional dancer. I went to Clearfield Job Course Center in Ogden, Utah, and I met a young lady there, and we got married, and she brought me to California to get me discovered. And I knew it wasn't like that, you know. I knew the steps you had to go through to be discovered. And I ended up teaching a class at uh, Mafundi Institute. I was teaching an African dance class there and also posed for, what do you call it, figure drawing at um, Otis Parsons and USC. My wife ended up going back to Utah and uh, I stayed here. On my 25th birthday, they started shooting King Kong with Jessica Lange, and I went to the audition and got that, and that just started me off here. When we did King Kong, a lot of the Soul Train dancers were on the set as extras, but I didn't know that until afterwards. So a good friend of mine, Tanaj Davis, she was here doing The Wiz at the Dorothy Chandler, and she had a girl from Chicago that danced in the show that wanted to hang out with the Soul Train dancers down at Maverick's Flat. That's where we used to hang out at. It was a Friday night, and we went down to Maverick's and walked in, and it was nice, you know. So we got on the dance floor, and everybody else was doing street stuff, and we do what dancers do. We throsh, you know. So we were dancing and kicking and turning and spinning, and uh, Jeffrey Daniels and Tyrone Proctor were standing on the side. And when we finished dancing, they came over and asked us if we wanted to dance on Soul Train the following day, which was a Saturday. Tyrone called me and gave me all the information that morning. We went on up and got in and um, got on the dance floor and just danced, you know. Then when <laughs> it came to time, they cut. So I went to get on the riser and Chuck Johnson came over and said, uh, hey, who told you to get up there? I said, no one, it was just vacant and I thought you needed dancers, so I came up here. He said, uh, go sit over there in the audience. Well, we used to call them the stands. Anyway, so I sat there and then uh, later on when we were, it was time to go down the line, I went and got in the line. Yeah, once again, he came over and said, uh, I told you to come over here and get in the line. I said, no one, he said, hit the stands. So I hit the stands and went home and that next day I called Tyrone and told Tyrone I wasn't coming back. I didn't like the way that they treated me and they didn't need me. So he's like, no, no, they really, really like you. They want you to come back and everything. He said, well, just wear a shirt and some slacks. I said, well, I can't dance in shirt and slacks, not the way that I dance. So he said, just come on and go. So I put on a pair of slacks and a uh, shirt, and I called a friend of mine to go with me, um, Kepper Azizi, dance one number on the floor, and uh, Chuck came over and put me with uh, a partner. Her name was Daphne Davis. That was it, I danced one number on the floor and he put me on the riser. I've been on the risers until I left. I changed the way they dressed on Soul Train. I start wearing danced clothes. I always wore leg warmers and I always wore dance outfits. Either they were tights and a crop top, something I could move in jellies or jazz shoes that I wore on the show. 
unitards that uh, my friend Kepper would make or Aretha would make stuff for us both, you know. I really didn't have a style, but all of my stuff fitted tightly so that I could move and do my extensions, do my kicks, my jumps, my turns. So there was this one time I had on this steel gray unitard, long sleeve. I had my hair in braids, and Aretha and I were doing the spotlight. Don walked over to us, looked me up and down, and said, um, do you have some pants you can put on? So <laughs> I put on my pants and we continued to film. <laughs> there was one instance that I got in trouble. <laughs> Aretha had made this blue pants that were baggy at the top, you know, and you just put a belt around them and crunch the top. And she had this uh, white spaghetti strap T-shirt and it had boa feathers across the top. So I threw that on and she had on a blue skirt, white top, and then she had the white boa. At the last moment, she decided to throw the boa off stage. So we're up on the stage dancing. I think I had my hair in braids, so it was long. And I used to work out a lot, so my chest was chest, not breast. But Don saw it as breast and pulled both of us off the stage. I changed the way they danced on Soul Train. What I did was I took street dance and jazz and combined them. That's how I dance. I don't dance always on the beat, I dance in between the beats. So I would dance on different rhythms, depending on how I felt or how the music moved me. A few of my signature dance movements were a jazz stag leap, the thing that they end up calling the worm, which was a burlesque move that I learned from a friend in DC where I crawl on my back, I lay on the back and I crawl, and my jumps. I was known for doing a lot of jumps and my hang time in the air. My first dance partner on the show was Daphne Davis. I danced with her for about a three or four months. And then I came in one day and they put me with Aretha. Aretha was much taller than I was, so I didn't know how it was gonna work, but then once we started dancing and got to know each other, it was no problem. Cause she had her style, I had my style, and they just met because both of them had technique. It was really a lot of improvising because of um, however the music moved us. We listened to the music and whatever we felt then you, maybe I would start it off and Aretha would pick up and add you know, what she was doing, but we always complimented each other as we danced. Most memorable moments on the show. I used to work with Mickey Stevens and a group called Hodges, James and & Smith, and uh, they came on the show. <laughs> it's like, there's our dancer right there, you know, pointing me out to everybody, so that was a great moment. The other moment was Reggie Thornton came down the line trying to do my signature move, and I was next. Reggie went down first and tried to do my little back crawl down the line. He couldn't get it, so he had to do the African on, sit on the button, hop down. I was so <laughs> shocked, I was like, oh, no, he didn't. So I was like, I come up, I was gonna show you how to do it. So I got up and, uh, Jumped down, did it, did my flip, walked and slid to my knee like now, and got up and just did a sexy walk off looking into the camera. On my right, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Bobcats. Mr. X had just came off tour and um, they put him against me. It's called a showdown, folks. Bobcats, I'm gonna tell you, X is with Dancing Machine. So? Don was telling me that he just came off a tour and my response was, so? That has nothing to do with him out dancing me. Mr. X was a little short guy about my height, built, and he always had the toothbrush. He danced with the little toothbrush clowning, yeah. I like wings, that's all I like, chicken wings, so I, that was okay for me. But then, 
when it got to the point I got tired of that and been on the show for a while, uh, we would go across the street to Denny's and eat and have a cocktail or so like that. Also, while dancing on the show, I would leave on lunch break and go and work. It was a place down on Melrose called the Drake Theater. And I would do male exotic dancing there and then go back to the show. I stopped dancing on Soul Train because of a job at my Taft Hardly. They were giving me beef about dancing on the show. And so I went to Chuck and told them that I needed to start getting paid because the union was getting on my back and everything like that. And he's like, uh, well, I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, this is a audience participation show. So that's really how I left. Definitely would do it again. I enjoyed dancing on Soul Train. It gave me a chance to show the world how I moved, how I felt about music. I changed the way that they danced. When I first went on, I would notice how the guys that's from the community would be very awkward doing the slow dance. Most of the time you would see that the girls were doing the leading and not the guys. So when Aretha and I would dance, instead of slow dancing, which would really show the difference of our height, we would just start doing modern dance. So we would just do arm movements, contractions, extensions, stuff like that, which went along with the music, but we didn't have to slow dance. Then everybody would start doing the same thing. When they've noticed that we were getting more camera than everyone else, Bobcat, how are you and Aretha get, you know, all the camera and everything? It's like, we dance for ourselves, we don't dance for the camera. When you dance for the camera, it looks awkward, like you're doing it purposely. But when you dance for yourself, the camera guys would see you and it's like, ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. Or Chuck would say, hit Kat and uh, Aretha, you know, because he knew we were going to do something artful. Mm -hmm. 